essence of a free government consists in an effectual control of rivalry. We do not lay out ourselves in the service of mankind. Who in the Well, that was interesting. Hello and welcome to this new Let's Play with me, Grey Hunter, of Sid Meier's Civilization IV Colonization. Now you might be thinking to yourselves, you know, why is he choosing to do colonization? Which is what I'll be referring to this game as from now on, because the rest of it is a mouthful. And you would be asking yourselves, why is he interested? And I would be answering, well, because I watched Grimoth and SKS play it. I mean, I've played this game before, and it is quite fun. But I never really thought about Let's Playing it until I saw them playing through, and they've done two matches so far, they've just started recording a third on Revolutionary Difficulty, which I imagine is not going to go well. <laughs> because Revolutionary is the hardest difficulty in this game, and it's very, very difficult. Anyway, I was watching them play it, and I thought to myself, you know what? I love this game. Why not? Why not? And I had a look around for Let's Plays of it, and there were a few in German, there's one in French too, of all things, but I didn't really find any that were really good in English. I mean, Mr. British Gamer's version of it was very good, I'll grant him that, but eh, I don't know. I never really saw anybody playing with my sort of playstyle, so I figured, you know what, Grey Hunter's going to do a goddamn LP of it, because he's going to show you how he does things. And just as a disclaimer, this game is actually fairly difficult. And it's entirely possible that you will lose to the King's Royal Expeditionary Force. If you guys have watched Grimoth and SKS playing it, you'll know SKS got Ruffle stomped by his king. So, yeah, it's entirely possible we'll lose. That's just a disclaimer at the beginning, because we'll be playing on Conquistador, which is basically in the middle. It's not normal, it's hard, but um, this game is, like, hard anyway, so... Just as a dis you know, just as a disclaimer there, so you guys don't go, oh no, no, learn to play. Not that I think you would. I know you love me. I love you all too. So let's get to it. Let's go. Single player. We're going to be playing a custom game, and I am using a map script for this called Fairweather. I'll link the guy who made it in the description. But it's so good. It is very, very good. If you like me and you like big maps, and I cannot lie. <laughs> You other brothers can't deny it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you like big maps like I do, this is the map script for you. The maps in this game are fairly good, but I just love to have all that space to sort of build up in and, you know, expand through. And I don't like having to directly compete with the um, Europeans. I mean, a bit of competition is fine, but if we're competing over the exact same area, that just... Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't like that style of gameplay. So we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be playing with Europe and Independence on, none of this time bullshit, because if you have time on, all you have to do is not annoy the king, pretty much. If you have the highest score at the end, and you can get scores by getting founding fathers, and by getting more settlements, and keeping your tax rate low, if you have the highest score at the end of time, you just win. And I think that's a pansy way to play this game, just FYI. So we're going to be playing it the Patrick Henry style. Give me liberty or give me death. So we must declare independence at um, a certain point. You cannot not declare independence, but you can lose. So that'll be fun. Don't need any of those. We'll be playing with a huge map. It'll be temperate and low sea level. And we'll be playing on epic speed because I feel that 300 turns is just not quite enough to get everything ready for the revolution. It, it doesn't really make it longer than 300 turns, but it feels like it gives you longer than 300. Like, it's hard to explain. You'll see when we play the game, if you haven't played Civilization 4 before. But yeah. Uh, also, on that note, uh, despite the name Civilization 4 in the game name, it doesn't actually require Civilization 4 to play, so you can purchase uh, Colonization as a standalone game on Steam, which is quite nice. 
Now we're going to be playing as New England, and we'll be playing as John Adams. Not George Washington, because George Washington's bonus is kind of shit. All it does is it means you need half as many guns to arm your soldiers, and if you're playing to win independence at the end of the game, you should be producing enough guns that that does not matter. So I'm going to go with John Adams, and the reason I'm going with John Adams is because he's libertarian, and libertarians give plus 25% to Liberty Bell production, which is brilliant, because as New England, your bonus is tolerance, which means you need less crosses, which is how you uh, get immigration, and we'll explain that when we get into the game. You need less crosses to attract new immigrants, but the more immigrants you have, the more Liberty Bells you need, so John Adams, given plus 25% to Liberty Bell production, is massive because if you have large settlements, you need more, you might not get all the Founding Fathers you need to make all those Liberty Bells, so that's very handy. Because we're playing on a huge map, the other three European powers will be with us, so that's the French, who are kind of, eh, they're alright if you'd like to live with the natives and pretty much excel at doing that, they're okay. But you can pretty much have the same bonuses they have for the natives by just not attacking them and paying them for their land, etc. You can play as the Spanish, but I don't like the Spanish because they're pretty much the exact opposite of the way I like to play. They're pretty much warmongers, which while you need to be a little bit of a warmonger with the king, you don't so much need to be a warmonger until you declare independence, so their bonuses are kind of useless. And the Dutch are okay, but I like to have a lot of people, so while they're good at trading, I find that the English can pretty much do the same thing. They've just got a bit of a bonus when it comes to prices and taxes. Which is nice, but again, I just prefer John Adams. So this map script does take a fair while to generate. It can take up to five minutes. So I'm going to pause recording here, and then I'll rejoin you on the map. So I shall see you in a moment. Okay, so here we are with John Adams. In the year January 1492 AD, His Royal Majesty the King of England grants you a colonial charter. For the greater good of the nation, the King dubs thee Grey Hunter, Viceroy of the New World. Explore this new land, settle it, and bring wealth and glory upon yourself and upon our great nation. To achieve a victory, found your colony, declare your independence from the motherland after attaining a 50% rebel sentiment in all your settlements, and before time runs out, defend your fledgling country from the wrath of your motherland by wiping out all their ground forces. You must complete your revolution before any other European colony. So we are indeed competing. They can declare revolutions against their... Uh, own people. And they will. They will if they've got enough Liberty Bells and they feel that they can do it. So we start with a caravel, a pioneer, and a warrior. Well, a soldier. These guys are just free colonists who happen to have tools and guns. So we won't be using them for very much conquering, I don't think. So let's head in um, this way. Seems like a good idea to me. Okie dokie. Um... Let's go straight ahead. Oh, hello. Alright, so we found the coast. We found the... Incans? Yeah, Hawana Kapak is the Incans, I believe. So, let's head a little bit this way, because I want to see if there's anything good up this way. We've got some fish, but we probably wouldn't be able to use... Ooh. Ooh. More fish. More fish. Ooh. I like this spot. This spot looks good. We might want this, so I'm going to offload our guys. I'm going to put them here. Ooh, hello. Okay, we found the Arawak. We also found some silver. I sort of want that. Hmm. Silver is very good. Let's continue exploring before we decide to put our colony down. So, let's have a look. That is a lot of really, really good fish. This might be a good secondary colony spot. But now, though, I think we're going to settle here, because it'll be just out of range of him. So he shouldn't be too angry with us for doing so. So I'm going to settle you guys there. We'll get two good fish resources. We'll get some lumber, some furs, some iron ore. And I don't know what's here. It might be more water. But I guess we'll have a look and find out. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, this is a silver mining colony if ever I saw one. That looks like a good spot to settle. Okay, let's end turn again. So what would we get? We would get... You can only work the nine tiles around your... Um, well, the eight tiles, because the ninth one is your settlement. You can only work those tiles around your settlement. So we get some lumber, some furs. That's actually a really, really good spot. Most of our food would be coming from fish, but that's okay. We can work with that. So we shall found our colony. Since you are a small band of nomads, we welcome you to partake of the land around you. Cheers, bro! Alrighty, we shall name our settlement Jamestown. Might as well keep that. Jamestown. And we shall begin building a dock. And the reason we're going to begin building the dock is because it increases how much food fish tiles give you. And that is very important, seeing as we've got two fish tiles that give us four food. With the dock, that'll be even better. So we won't worry too much about food production right now. We want the lumber so that we can set him to working in the carpenter's shop. This fella, on the other hand we might want working on something else. What can we get? We can get a lodge, we can get a mine. There isn't really farmland around here. I'm considering sending him off to form that second colony already. I am going to send this fellow back to Europe. Actually, speaking of Europe, let's have a look and I'll explain how crosses work. So, what we've got here is immigrants, right? And, cr well, here are the immigrants. This is the immigrant bar, and you get one cross per turn at the moment, because what we've got is a settlement that produces one cross. I'm assuming it's just one cross because of the uh, settler we have sitting in here. And the way that works is you generate crosses, and when the bar is full, you get an immigrant. We only need four. Everyone else needs eight, because we have half as many crosses required for immigration which is lovely. We can also rush people if we wanted to, but we haven't got enough gold at the moment, and that's fine, we can work with that. But I would really love it if a seasoned scout was in here, because you need them to do the exploring. For now, he's going to head out this way and just have a look over there, see what's going on. I am tired, deliver 20 gold and kiss my ring, and let me rest. King of England, no, we already pay taxes. Shh, we don't, but he doesn't know that. Oh. Yes? Oh my, this this could be good. If we built a colony here, we'd have access to sugar, which is used for rum, we'd have access to the silver, and we'd be really close to Jamestown. We might make, we might still use this, but we'd probably then use it as a tool-making, gun-making community instead. I wonder. I'm going to send him there. You do have to pay the natives for your land every once in a while. So let's see what he thinks of us so far. He's impressionable and gracious, so he'll get less annoyed about us taking his land, but he'll still be pissed off about it. Hopefully he won't be too annoyed, and he'll just let, let us settle. So if we chose to settle... Yes, I know, inland lies the riches. He would want 954 gold. Okay, we're not going to do that yet, obviously, because we haven't got 954 gold, but it's definitely a thought. So for now, I think I'm just going to send him back, and he can work on the dock, and we'll go from there. But that looks like a really good spot to settle. It's got a bit of everything. And again, we've got iron ore as well, so we can produce tools if we need to. And then from tools, we can produce guns. So a free colonist is awaiting us in Europe, and a seasoned scout... Season Scout, yes, okay. We might be able to hurry him up. We won't be able to use uh, any gold to build improvements to begin, but I'd rather have the Season Scout, because when he explores, he collects a lot of goodies. So, you, sir, you can hang out and start building the dock. Why? Oh, right, because uh, it would be too much food. Okay, that's fair enough. And can we hurry you along yet? No. Maybe next turn. Yeah, yeah, I know you're here. I'm going to keep you in Europe for now, unless I can hurry him. 105 gold. Okay, so next turn we can get him. And turn. Yes, I know. And I'll be taking you. Thank you very much. Off we go. Sail. Sweet. Cool. 
So Jamestown is not doing so fantastically on the food situation, but that's because uh, we still haven't built the dock. Once we've got the dock, we'll be able to pump out food fairly quickly. And hopefully, because when you go to visit the natives, they will be able to teach you things. So hopefully one of these guys will be an expert fisherman. If not, we might have to purchase one from home. But that's okay. So you're on starvation. Well, keep doing that then. Stop. Stop being stupid. Yeah, turn off citizen automation. I don't want it. Leave me alone, game. I know what I'm doing. Alright, and our ship is back, so that's perfect. We'll probably get the pioneer out to begin building things after our scout goes and visits people. Although, we could probably use... Oh, hello, Juanica Park. He is prosperous and a mentor, so he's going to be fairly lenient towards us as well, so long as we don't do anything stupid and piss him off. But believe me, I do not want to do something stupid and piss him off. So you two get out there. Can we send anything back? We can. All won't get us very much, but some gold is better than no gold, so I'm happy with that. You, sir, you are going to go visit uh, Atabay. And apologies in advance to anyone who actually knows how to say these things, because I don't. So he's going to Atabay. The dock will be built in a minute, so you, sir, can work on Liberty Bells. At least for now. So, for now, I would like to get a warehouse. This should still be growing. Yep. So we've got a lot of food. Swell, and I would like you to talk to the chief, but we'll have to wait a turn. Hello. You are learned in the ways of expert or minor. We're in need of horses. Please give these beads worth 2,508 gold to your chief as a token of our friendship. Not the worst thing in the world. But you can just go exploring. So what we've got is a treasure. You can only transport them by galleon, but as the tooltip says, your king can transport it for you. He'll just take a 50% commission. Which, all in all, isn't the worst thing in the world for him to do. He's not too bad when it comes to that. The Incans gave us a gift. Yay! I like gifts. Who's up next? Oh, we got a Firebrand Preacher. Sweet. I didn't even notice that. It probably just happened this turn. Uh, okay, so we might sell him the treasure, because that'll give us enough gold to go and then form this second colony, and then we can start mining silver. And after we've got a wagon train, we can take the silver from here to here, and so forth and so on. So, let's see. How do you feel about us still? You're still not annoyed. Still fairly pleased with us, all things considered. Which is nice, and the king should be popping up with a message in a minute. No? Alright, well, I'll preempt him. Yes, you may indeed offer your galleons. I would be happy to pay your fee. God save the king. Now, he probably will want some of that money back at some point, but that's okay. We can uh, tell him to sod off. You're doing okay. We'll have to wait until we get the Firebrand Preacher in, because I want the Firebrand Preacher to replace the guy doing Liberty Bells. The King will probably grow alarmed in a minute, though, about our rebel sentiment. So we'll sell that, get some more gold, sweetness. Who do we want? Is there anybody here that we want? Not really. We could get a silver miner, but that would cost a lot, and we want the money so that we can form that second settlement. So we'll just send him back. And that works for me, in turn. Cigars and rum are no longer as worth it as they used to be. That's fine. And you've discovered ancient treasure. Excellent. Um, you are giving me beads worth 1,254 gold. Not bad. Not bad at all. You guys can hang out over there in Jamestown. And you are returned. Excellent. Take you three turns to get there, but that's okay. Three turns is not the end of the world. Borders of Jamestown have expanded. That might annoy him, because he gets a little bit... All the Indians get a little bit irritated once your Liberty Bell production, which is what culture is in this game, um, builds up and expands your borders. If you do that, they get a little bit miffed, mainly because, you know, you're stealing their land. You would like to give me 
Uh, no, I don't need 620 gold at the moment. We'll stockpile this. We'll be stockpiling more valuable treasures for us. And we'll send them back when we feel like it. So you can take over that job. You can hang out here. Yes, be a colonist. You can also be a missionary if you want to. You can get converted natives. But for now, we don't really need that. And we'll sell... We'll sell that fur. 